My name is Jonathan and I'm going to be your instructor for today. Used to be a technician back in the day. Now I just push buttons on a keyboard in this nice little warm office. <laughs> but I have been through the kind of things that you have to go through every day. So I have plenty of sympathy for you. And as I teach, I like to try and relate some of that into my teaching. Now, I do speak a little weird because originally I'm from London, England. Uh, left there when I was 23 years old and came here to work in the United States on HVAC and refrigeration equipment. So today's agenda, we are going to be concentrating mainly on the Indigo Next ice machine. We're going to look at some decommissioning. Uh, we're going to look at some removal of parts for cleaning. Going to do clean and sanitize on the Indigo Next 2. And then we're also going to look at clean sequence of operation and winterize and remove from service on those ice machines. So we're going to go through a basic look at our Indigo Next ice machine, and it does pertain to our other ice machines too. So you can go through those and as we move along, we'll look at all the different ways that it pertains to different machines. So why would we decommission a machine? Well, this came up a lot recently because a lot of restaurants did shut down because of COVID. And sometimes we get a lot of shutdowns for the winter as well. And when you shut down an ice machine, just like the inside of a refrigerator, whatever is left in there likes to grow that nasty stuff you can see up there on the screen so decommission is required to prevent that nasty growth inside of the ice machine uh, low ambience in the winter they can cause damage to machines too we don't want water to freeze inside of those ice machines during the winter so we would decommission them now something new we're trying which i really like so far is at the end of today's seminar, at the end of today's webcast, we'll do a little quiz. We'll give you a link so you can go take a quiz and fill out some questions, put into practice what you've learned today, and then we will send you a certificate of completion automatically and a copy of this presentation. So instead of the old days where we would have you type your email into the Q&A section and have Mr. William York send you that. We're doing it automatically now with a quiz at the end. So when we get to the end, I'll show you how to get there. Don't worry. And you can go in there and take those questions. It doesn't take very long. It's pretty quick. It's kind of fun to do. And you can do it on your computer or you can do it on your cell phone. As we move through, luckily I have Mr. William York here to help me today. Always grateful for that. Uh, and he'll be watching your Q&As in the questions section. So you can go and type any questions you have in that Q&A section. The little speech bubbles with a question mark on them up there is where you would find them. Uh, I'm going to put that up on my other screen too, just so I can take a look at them. All right, so I got them up there on my screen. So once you've done that, you're going to get a, a little submit section. And then once you've submitted it, it'll show you how well you've done. And then down will come that certificate to your email that you wrote in that section. So make sure you're careful about typing your email in on that section. All right, let's take a look at some decommissioning uh, on our Indigo ice machines. We do have videos of all this training as well that we do. Uh, you can see we have a detailed cleaning uh, as we go through today and detailed decommissioning as well. So if you ever need reference there, we have a nice YouTube channel with well-built. Uh, and also we have a Manitowoc Ice YouTube channel as well built into that well-built channel. So let's take a look at this removal of parts for this ice machine. So we're going to remove some of the parts and we're just going to unscrew the front panel. There's two Phillips screws down there. I'm sorry, one Phillips screw on this machine because the door swings outwards. Uh, we're going to open that panel, uh, 45 degrees support with the hand, and we can slide it out. And we can release that front panel too. So if you want to release that front door, there's a little push pin 
on the top left of that door that you can push down with a little screwdriver or a pen or a pencil or something like that and it will release the top make sure you grab the bottom as you hit it and then that'll release the door for you so you can take that door completely off the machine taking a look inside the machine a little bit we've got a water curtain here hanging over the evaporator grid um, it's just held on with two pins, one on each side, left and right. So we're going to gently flex the middle of the curtain and pop one side out of the, the pin, and then the other side will come out as well. So we're going to pop that out and then remove that curtain uh, on the ice machine. Top of the ice machine on air cooled only has this little extra cover, this black rubber cover on the top of it. This is to prevent air from escaping into that hot condenser section into the ice making section. In the past, there was just a cover on the top of the ice machine, which I've taken off here so you can see it. And we placed this rubber piece on top to prevent that air from escaping into that evaporator section, just in case there was any kind of small leaks in there. It made it much more efficient, uh, especially in a really hot environment. Ice thickness probe. Now, I don't know if you can see, uh, I'm gonna get my pen here. Oh, I love a good pen drawing, but I don't know if you notice that this tab right here, the pin on the ice probe is slightly longer than the one on the left tab right here. I think people don't notice that sometimes. So a quick tip for you is when you're taking this ice thickness probe out, uh, you wanna squeeze the left side pin in and pop that out and then the right side will slide out after that. I see a lot of people, you know, naturally, I guess, ergonomically try and squeeze that right side and take that right side pin out first, but you want to take that left side pin out first. So just a little tip on there uh, for you to do that. The ice thickness probe can be cleaned in place at this point. You don't have to completely remove it. Uh, if you don't want to, you can clean it in place, but if you do want to remove it, you can unplug it from the board uh, and slide the cord out and take it over to the sink. Water distribution tube. So on top of this evaporator is a water distribution tube. It has two thumb screws in it from the outside and the inside. Right here and right here. These two middle thumb screws, they don't need to be removed at this point. And also, if you have a smaller ice machine, there might not even be two middle thumb screws on that water distribution tube. So you can just loosen that distribution tube and pull it out towards you. Just slip it out towards you. You might have to hook your fingers behind it a little bit. Um, you don't have to take thumb screws all the way out. They have little O-rings that hold them in place. So you can slide that out and you can take that to the sink as well. Um, and you notice these three little O-rings here uh, on that distribution tube as you slide it out. Take a quick look at them, make sure they're in good shape, make sure they're not rolled over or anything like that on those machines. Take a quick look at them, make sure they're in good shape uh, as you pull that out. Then we're gonna take the water trough out next. So here's my handy dandy water trough. We don't want to use tools in this ice machine to remove parts. So we're going to make sure that everything comes out by hand. The reason we don't like using tools inside the food zone is because your tools are not sanitary. So it's unlikely that you sanitized your tools before you worked inside of this food zone. And we don't want to transfer any kind of germs or contaminants from hand tools into a food zone. I don't think you sanitized any kind of screwdrivers before you went in there and worked on this machine. So we try and avoid using the use of tools in there. So I'm gonna squeeze these tabs towards the middle. I might cross my arms to do it because sometimes it makes it a little bit easier, but I'm gonna squeeze these two thumb tabs right here. Here's one, here's two, 
Those are going to squeeze into the middle, and then I'm going to gently pull that water trough towards me and let the back of it drop down to clear the water pump. And then my water trough's going to come out, which makes it nice and easy to clean. I don't know if you've ever cleaned ice machines where you cannot remove their water troughs. Uh, they're so hard to clean. Makes it so difficult to get in there and clean them up. So we always wanted to have a water trough that was easily removable for you to take over to the sink and make it nice to clean. Next, we're going to take a look at this water pump. So here's my water pump. I'm just taking a look at my questions here. So here's my water pump. I'm going to grab the bottom of my water pump at the base and I'm going to pull it down. I'm just going to jerk that pump down and it'll unsnap from its fitting. Uh, as it comes down, you're going to see that there is a cord coming down as I pull the pump down pull the cord through the hole, then you'll get to a connector. You can squeeze the connector and undo it, and then you can take your whole water pump out the machine with no screws or fasteners, and you can take that right over to the sink to clean it up if you need to. This is the outlet, just because I like to draw things in my seminars. <laughs> this is the outlet of the water pump where the water comes out, so when you do push that water pump back in, you want to align this outlet of the water pump. Uh, you could say the male side of it, or the female side of the ice machine where the hole it goes in. So you want to align those up and then push it into snap. I see in my factory schools here when people here, sometimes when they put their water pump back in, they don't align the outlet to the, the inlet of where it picks up the water and then it just sprays all over the bottom of that evaporator when you turn it back on on that unit. Next, we're going to take a look at my water probe. So we'll take a look at my little three prong water probe hanging out here just below the machine. It comes out the same way as the water pump. I'm just going to grab it and it'll be kind of wiggly a little bit and I'll move it around and then I'll just pull it straight down and it'll unsnap from the bottom of the ice machine. And again, you'll see as you pull it down, a little connector will come through that you can squeeze with your finger and undo the water probe. It may or may not look like this one on the connector. There are new connectors on our water probes now. So it might look like a little bit of a different connector to the one you see here on the picture, but a lot of them will look just like this. There's been this connector out since 2011 on this type of ice machine. So there's a lot of them out there right now. And this is a little secret hideaway tip that I like to show on this ice machine. On top of the evaporator is something called an evaporator top filler panel. Sometimes I'll call it an inspection panel. And you can take that off too and clean it. You just hook your fingers behind it, pull it towards you and it unsnaps. Now the handy thing about that inspection panel is just like it's called, you can take a look at the back of the evaporator if you want it. Years ago when there was tubing separation from the back of the evaporator sometimes, we're talking like in the 80, early 80s, uh, late 70s, people would be very paranoid about tubing separation on an evaporator and they wanted to have an easy way uh, to inspect the back of it. So this little filler panel up there is ready up there that you can pop it off and you can take a flashlight and you can look down the back of that evaporator if you would like to uh, on that unit to give you access to the back of that evaporator much easier than it ever did before. So we're just trying to make access easier for you and easier ways to inspect it. So to review, we looked at removing the front panel, just two, just one little screw, swing that panel open. If you want to remove it because there's not enough room to work, you can do that too by just pre spring, pressing the spring loaded hinge. We looked at water curtain removal. We looked at the top evaporator cover, the ice probe, just squeezing that ice probe in. Water distribution tube, water trough removal. Popping out my little water pump, popping out my water probe, 
and then the evaporator top filler panel. Sometimes they call it an inspection panel uh, that you may not have known about on that unit. All right, so that's going to get us to clean and sanitizing. So think about it. I've pulled all my parts out my ice machine. I've removed all those parts for cleaning. Uh, and then I'm going to move into my clean and sanitizing cycle. I might have washed all those parts in the sink, got them all cleaned up, and I may have put them back in the ice machine, and I can run a clean sanitizer cycle. Let's talk about our cleaner for a second here. Now, this is pretty cool. Our ice machine sanitizer is good. It's been tested uh, for the... Uh, SARS-CoV-2, the cause of COVID-19, uh, is a killer for that bacteria. So that's kind of cool. Um, I remember back in March when this all broke loose and people were, getting a, were having a really hard time getting sanitizer or surface cleaner. Uh, and we tested our, they were asking us if our ice machine sanitizer would do it. So we tested it. We took it to a lab and tested it. And yes, it was a killer of that SARS virus that causes COVID-19 uh, with our unit. So that's kind of cool that our sanitizer uh, could be doubled up to use as a surface cleaner if you were really experiencing, you know, some way that you couldn't get your surface cleaner from your regular places, which I don't think it's happening as much now. I think they've caught up with keeping that stuff in stock. But back in March, April, when people just couldn't get that surface sanitizer, um, we had a way that they could use our ice machine sanitizer. So that was kind of cool. So here's our two chemicals that we would use on this ice machine. We have ice machines descaler that used to be called cleaner. And we have ice machine sanitizer. So we're slowly making the switch from ice machine cleaner to ice machine descaler. People were getting confused about, okay, I want ice machine cleaner, but doesn't cleaner sanitize? Isn't that the same thing? So we're slowly moving to more of a wording where we call it ice machine descaler and ice machine sanitizer. So part number 9405463 for cleaner, 9405653 for sanitizer on that ice machine. And we're going to use descaler for lime or mineral buildup. And then we're going to use sanitizer for disinfecting. Um, maybe you could think of it as the descaler is really good at getting that hard lime scale buildup stuff off. And the sanitizer used it use it when you're done and it gets rid of that slimy you know soft jelly type nasty stuff in that ice machine for you so be careful um it's a federal law that you have to use chemicals in the manner con consistent with their uh labeling so don't do that we don't want you being arrested <laughs> for using descaler or sanitizer incorrectly, right? I don't want to have to call the feds <laughs> on you for using it in the incorrect way. I don't know if that's ever happened, but I just like to put that warning out. So clean and sanitize all surfaces. You can see um, my little man here is cleaning with a sponge, which is okay in a lot of areas, but maybe that's not okay in your district or your municipality or, or wherever you're at maybe that's not good to clean with a sponge i don't know so you want to check with your local codes on that um, but a lot of them it's fine to do it with a sponge but you could use a cloth uh, or something like that on it and clean and sanitize all those surfaces all those surfaces you can get to all those parts you pulled out we're going to clean and sanitize them got these beautiful uh curved corners in our ice machine too. We, you know, we did that on purpose too, to make it nice and easy to clean so you wouldn't get all scale and nasty stuff stuck up in a 90 degree corner. So we'd curve those corners, make them look really sleek, like a Ferrari and just look so good in there so you can clean them out. And notice too, you don't see that the evaporators, U-bends on the end of it are all poking out in there too, right? Those are all, 
almost impossible to clean behind all of those u bends on the evaporator so that's all taken out of the food zone on purpose to make this ice machine much much easier to clean on that unit everything's nice and front facing too that's on purpose as well to make it easy to clean we want to make this nice and easy and quick to clean for you you know when it comes down to it the thing you're going to do the most on an ice machine is probably clean it even if it did have a problem with an ice probe or a water pump or a compressor uh it's going to be dirty more than likely so the thing you're going to do most to an ice machine is not change expansion valves or compressors the thing you're going to do most is clean it so we designed this ice machine to be nice and easy to clean nice easy way to clean it on their ice machine uh, that's one of our number one goals on our ice machine is just to make cleaning easy as possible because that's what you're going to be doing the most of so here is my ice thickness probe this is my acoustic style ice thickness probe um, redesigned to be easy to clean when we changed it and surface scale and slime doesn't affect its operation you probably remember the old upside down tees with one red wire sticking out those were great ice probes but eventually when they'd get enough slime and scale on it that would affect their operation so we redesigned our ice probe in 2011 to be this acoustic style ice probe um, it's not dishwasher safe don't want to put it in a dishwasher that'll damage it especially some of these dishwashers running over 200 degrees you can clean it in, in place clean all surfaces rinse it with water and then dry it up thoroughly back to my little water distribution tube uh, we took the two outside thumb screws out of it to remove it from the machine now we're going to take the two inside thumb screws apart and that'll split it apart to make it nice and easy to clean for us. You might remember the old like tube in tube, the circular tube inside of a circular tube, and you would have to try and force it apart and it would get real stiff with scale and it'd be so hard to get that thing apart on you. Um, so this makes it much easier. It comes apart with just two screws and you can get to all those little holes. You don't need a special brush to clean it or anything like that either. We like to avoid having to make you buy some kind of special tool to clean the ice machine with. We want you just to be able to clean it with regular stuff that you find in the kitchen every day uh, at your location. All right, condenser. So this is an air-cooled ice machine. It does have a little metal type condenser on the back of it, condenser filter on the back of it. And you can just lift that filter out of the air-cooled ice machine, take it to the sink and vacuum it, take it to the sink and wash it, or you could vacuum it too. Um, if it's in really bad shape and it's pulling apart, you could always replace it. Um, but that air filter sits in there in the back of the unit. You can also see, well, let's take it, let's take a little closer look at it. Um, you can take off the filter, and if it's greasy or you know, real nasty and or the filter's gone, sometimes people just pull them off and leave them off, then you can use regular condensing cleaner, commercial condensing cleaner. Um, from your supply house to clean that condenser up if it's got some grease or impacted inside of it or something like that or on those on those units and to do that we'd want to obviously disconnect the power on that ice machine before we run any kind of water in that ice machine and we might want to use a lock out tag out to make sure nobody's plugging it in while we're cleaning it and then always a good idea, use your flashlight to shine through the condenser to see if light comes through it on the other side and see how much um, it's blocked up in there. You should see some nice air gaps in that condenser. You should see the light coming through that condensing coil when you clean it. So we can do it this way. We, if it's dusty, we can use a pressurized line to blow it out whether it's nitrogen or co2 or pressurized air i don't know 
we're gonna blow that condense out and there's always talk of the old days where guys would blow it out of r12 back in the day because r12 used to be so cheap but we don't want to blow it out with any kind of refrigerant right we just want to use nitrogen or compressed air or co2 on that to clean that condenser out uh, and i'm going to blow it out from the inside here um to try and make it reverse on that condenser because it sucks air in the back and blows it out the sides of that machine so i'm going to kind of reverse direction to try and keep that condenser uh blown out with that unit all right outside of the unit this is something interesting it's called duratech it looks like stainless steel but it's actually not it's a it's a, it's a alloy and it works better than stainless steel that's why we use it it's more scratch resistant than stainless it doesn't have it's not prone to corrosion uh, when it comes in contact with chlorine or something like that which can be really aggressive on stainless steel sometimes um, so we're going to clean the outside of this duratech with just soapy water we don't need to use stainless steel cleaner that'll leave a residue on it so I'm just going to use some soapy water and clean up the front of this unit. I'm going to clean the bin too, uh, make it look nice and shiny, right? Uh, remember being a service technician and my service manager was always very careful about make sure you clean the outside of the machine because, you know, customers don't really look on the inside, but if the outside looks clean, then they're going to be satisfied that you did a good job. So make sure that it gets cleaned on the outside very well, as well as you can make it on that ice machine. Fingerprint resistant too on that Duratech. That's another reason we don't use stainless steel on there because you get nasty fingerprints on it. It didn't look good, customers didn't like it. Um, so we use uh, fingerprint resistant Duratech on it. No abrasives, no uh, scratchy pads or anything like that that will damage the the appearance of it uh, on that unit and no like crazy cleaners to use on that Duratech outside uh, unit on that machine. All right, let me get a drink here. And we'll start to talk about the clean sequence of operation. So for the clean sequence, we have a interactive clean sequence on our ice machine that we've used in the past. We recommend cleaning and sanitizing that ice machine at least every six month period on it. You can find details of that cleaning sequence in the operation manual on your ice machine. Um, you can also find it on the inside of the front door as you swing it open. So every six months at least we're going to run this cleaning cycle. We're going to need ice machine descaler and ice machine sanitizer to run this cleaning cycle through. So let's take a look at this. I'm going to start by turning the ice machine off. So we're going to stop making ice if it's in the making ice mode. Uh, and then we're going to go through my cleaning cycle. Now, another interesting thing about a Manitowoc ice machine was it's designed so that it could be, go, it could go through its clean cycle without removing any ice from the bin. It's always a really good idea to take the ice out of a bin and clean the bin out when you're there. Um, but it is designed that you don't have to remove the ice when you run through a cleaning cycle because when it has an automatic cleaning system in it, those run through cleaning cycles all the time and we don't, you know, we don't empty the bin every time you run through it. All right, so I'm going to press um, the clean cycle. Now on later software versions, we did put a little uh, backdoor secret Easter egg in here that you could cancel the cleaning cycle. Uh, if you'd gone into the cleaning cycle by accident, you could press the clean and the power button at the same time um, for about three seconds, and that would cancel the clean cycle. Now, we don't tell owners or customers that because we don't want them canceling the clean cycle if they've already put chemical in there, but we can tell technicians that you can cancel it by pressing the clean 
and the power button at the same time for about three seconds. Um, the curtain's got to be on this ice machine to start up a clean cycle properly because we don't want all the water splashing out of it. If the curtain's not in place and the cleaner's activated, the dump valve will energize, but nothing else will happen. No pump, no rinse, nothing like that on the machine. So I'm going to press my clean cycle and I'm going to get this nice little message on the screen <laughs> to warn my customer uh, that, hey, you know, when you do this clean cycle, you're not going to make ice for about 30 minutes as you go through this, at least 30 minutes. If I run a sanitizing cycle too, then I'm going to have another 30 minute cycle. So it gives my chance, it gives my customer a chance to back out of this system, to um, abort this system. And you can see there's an abort sign on that unit. But if they press continue, um, we're going to move through that clean cycle. If they press abort, we're going to go back to this main screen. But I'm going to carry on uh, and press continue. Oh, one too many clicks there. And then it's going to say, look at the front panel or use your use and care manual ice on the evaporator uh, to access the man ice on the evaporator, access manual harvest through the service menu. So I want to get rid of. I want to get rid of all my um, ice on that evaporator. I want to get rid of all my ice on that evaporator uh, as I go through. So I'm going to harvest it all off there. Press the right arrow and it's going to give me an idea of what I want to do once I'm done this clean cycle. So I got two choices. I can make ice when I'm done this clean cycle. Or I can just turn it off when I've done this clean cycle on the ice machine. Uh, my choice is here. I'm going to turn off on this one. And then it says, OK, we're going to start my clean cycle. So I'm going to go for a 45 second purge. That means I'm going to open my dump valve. You can see my dump valve there and my water pump. Those two items are going to be running, and so I'm pumping water down the drain. I'm pumping that water down the drain on my ice machine, just pumping it down there. So it's important that I have a vented drain line and I have a nice unrestricted drain line. I'm not just gravity draining, I'm, I'm pumping it right down that dump valve. Then it gives me a nice indication on the screen of what's going on. I'm going to have a 45 second purge cycle. Uh, and then I'm going to go through my water filling. So now I got rid of all my water in my ice machine. And then I'm going to put a fresh batch of water in there to help me clean with it. So I'm filling with water in my water trough, waiting for it to come up and touch my water probe on that clean cycle. So here comes my water in, filling up that water trough, waiting to touch my water probe and then turn the water off. Now at that point, it's going to tell you to add your chemical. I don't know if you're putting descaler in or sanitizer in at this point. So it's just going to tell you to add one of those two chemicals, whichever step you're in on that unit. Now, if you don't, if you fail to add those chemicals, it's going to abort the cleaning cycle uh, and go back to, to switching off. But once I've added, once I've poured that chemical into my water trough, I can hit the little add chemical button on there. Here we are pouring my um, ice machine cleaner into my water trough. I'm going to pour it in over the top behind the water curtain. There's different ways of doing it. This is the one I prefer if I have access to it. I could pop my curtain off and lean it forward a little bit and pour it in that way. That's a little bit more messy. I, I've seen people take, you know, like these big like medicine syringes almost. Um, you can normally get them free at Walgreens, I found. And sometimes they put them in those and it's, they, they bring the chemical into those and then squirt it in the water trough. That could be done too. You get a real fine measurement on that as well. So if I didn't do that, if I waited 10 minutes and didn't press I've added chemicals or I didn't add chemicals, I'm going to get a little notice like this that the clean sequence has been terminated because no chemicals were added. And then it's going to go back to the off cycle. But if I go back and I tell it I did add chemicals this time, 
Then it's going to tell me I'm in a wash cycle. So for 10 minutes, it's going to circulate that ice machine uh, descaler, or it could be sanitizer if you're in the sanitizing step afterwards over the evaporator, just circulating it over evaporator, uh, destroying that scale and whatever is built up on that unit. So we're going to go through a 10 minute countdown. Water coming down my evaporator, going into my water trough, doing a nice little great job of washing everything up on my evaporator. And then, you know, I'm going to have this nasty mix of chemical and water and dirt in my water trough. So I need to get rid of all that stuff. So I'm going to flush it out. So again, I'm going to energize my dump valve and my water pump, and I'm going to pump all that stuff down the drain. I'm actually going to do this six times. So there's six little blocks on the screen as I, and as I do it each time, one little block is going to fill up each time. So I kind of know how long is left until the end of my cleaning cycle is finished. So after 10 minutes of washing, the sister enters into the last step, which is six rinses and flushes. So between these flushes, I'm going to add water to my water trough, fill it up to the top again, let it touch my water probe, um, and then I'm going to go through another flush and get rid of all that stuff again. All right, so that's going to be my next step. I'm going to have six rinses and flushes. And then depending on what I did, tell it to do, if I told it to start making ice after it was done, um, we're going to have this screen and we're going to start making ice on it. And if I told it to turn off, we'd have an off screen on that ice machine. Uh, if I told it to turn off on that unit when it was done. So if I did a descaling procedure and then told it to turn off, now I could do my sanitizing procedure next. So 30 minutes for uh, roughly 30 minutes for descaling and then roughly 30 minutes to run my sanitizer through it, uh, which is the way you should do it on this ice machine. All right, so let's just review a little bit here. We talked about um, the cleaning and sanitation cycle. We talked about what cleaners and sanitizers and, you know, now we're starting to move to the word descaler instead of cleaner. We talked about disassembly for cleaning and sanitation, pulling those parts out. We talked about air filters in the ice machine. We talked about air cool condensing cleaning. So if the air filter wasn't good enough to to trap the dust or it was long gone, somebody threw it away a long time ago, uh, we might want to clean that condenser. We talked about exterior cleaning with Duratec and not using stainless steel cleaner on it. We talked about the clean sequence of operation and how that works as well. Uh, and next we're going to talk about winterization. Here, let me get a drink real quick. And look at your questions. It's looking good. And we'll take a look at winterization. Like I was saying earlier, why would we want to winterize it? Well, maybe temperatures are going to drop below 35 where, wherever it is. Maybe it's in like a swimming pool house or something, or maybe it's on a golf course. I've seen them on golf courses a lot um, where they're in like a little hut that's not temperature controlled. Uh, and we need to winterize it if it's going to get below 35 degrees. Or maybe we're doing just a long term shutdown. And if we're closing our restaurant up for a season, which happened a lot in back in March and April, as we all know, um, we might want to shut it down for longer than two weeks. So we'd come up with a would come to the machine and shut it down. We wouldn't just turn it off and walk away. That's not good because, again, it's going to grow all that mold inside of the ice machine if it's going to be shut down for more than two weeks. So after we shut it down, we'd go through a cleaning and sanitizing process, just like I showed you uh, just a minute ago. Descale and clean that ice machine. And then we would turn the ice machine off uh, and we would disconnect the water line 
and the drain line on the back of the ice machine. This one's an air cooled, so I've disconnected the water line and the drain line on the back of this ice machine. And we need to make sure all that water comes out of the ice machine. So I'm going to press the power button uh, to turn the ice machine on in ice making mode. And then as the compressor comes on at about a minute into the cycle, the head pressure is going to start to rise. Uh, and I'm going to blow everything out of that ice machine on a water cooled. On this one, I'm going to blow out the water inlet line. So about 45 seconds into a cycle, the water inlet valve opens and it will stay open for a good six minutes. And I'm going to blow that line out. I'm just going to squirt that line and blow it out there to make sure I clear all that water out of that water line and it doesn't freeze up and burst at some point in the winter. Uh, you could also um, energize all the relays on the board in the service menu. If you didn't want to wait 45 seconds to blow it out when you turn it on, you could just energize all the relays. That's another cool way of doing it. And you could blow it out that way too. So let me show you how to do that. I'm going to go into my ice machine. And I'm going to go into the service menu and I'm going to click on enable all relays in the diagnostic menu and then I'm going to spray my condenser out. All right, I'm going to take a look at the next one. We're going to press the power button and turn the ice machine off and we're going to disconnect electrical um, on the machine after we've blown all the water lines out and make sure everything is good. And then we're gonna sanitize the inside of those surfaces too, just to make sure none of that nasty mold grows in there while we've shut this ice machine down for the winter. And then I'm gonna put all my panels back on uh, and get everything good to go. Now a water cooled, little bit different because we got that water cooled condenser. So we're gonna do all the regular steps like we just did under self-contained but for a water cooled, we need to concentrate a little bit on this water cooled condenser. Now, how water cooled condensers work, you might know this, you might not. As the head pressure goes up in a system, the water valve opens and water flows through the water cooled condenser and shoots water down the drain. So you can see I have an inlet and an outlet for that condenser. Um, and right now, with the power off, the valve, the modulating valve is closed, so I can't just blow water through that condenser right now. I need to somehow get that pressure regulated mo um, monitoring valve or regulating valve open on that machine. So I got to get it open somehow. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to energize my ice machine. I'm going to turn it to the free cycle so it's making ice. After a minute, the head pressure is going to start to come up. And as the head pressure comes up, the water valve is going to open by pressure because it's connected to the head pressure. And then I can spray my gas into that outlet. So as the head pressure comes up, I'm just going to keep spraying into the inlet until I see a bunch of water come out the outlet. <laughs> it's going to go all over you if you're standing there, um, but you want to keep spraying until you see no more water coming out of it. So at first, you first turn it on, your air pressure is not going to get through that condenser. And then all of a sudden, you're going to fill that condenser open up and a bunch of water is going to spray out on towards you to clean out that air cooled condenser for you. So that's a water cooled ice machine. Um, removing it from surface. We did a clean and sanitize on it. We blew air out of it. Um, to get the air out of the water making the ice lines and then we blew air through um, the water cooled condenser to make sure that was out of it on our ice machine as well. All right, so that kind of brings me towards the end of our cleaning and sanitizing procedures. You want to make sure you only use Mantwalk OEM descaler and sanitizer. Those are the only ones approved for our evaporators, okay? So our evaporators generally have a five-year warranty on them, and so you want to use Manitowoc Ice Machine Cleaner uh, or descaler and sanitizer so we know we have the right stuff on that evaporator. If a warranty claim is made, we don't want to find out that it was been clean cleaned with something that was unapproved. That could void your warranty. We don't want that to happen. 
online training. We know this is quite an unusual <laughs> season this year, and we do have online training technical videos and technical uh, interactive uh, programs that you can go online and use for free. There's no credit card. There's no sign in, nothing like that. You can just get in there and do those for free, which is really just an amazing resource um, because I've been to online schools lately and they are not cheap either. And this is a completely free resource you can use right off our website, mountalkice.com service training. And you can get in there and take a look at those. Our videos, I showed you them a little bit earlier, are all available as well. Uh, you can take your phone. Where's my phone? You could take your phone and scan these uh, QR codes on your camera if you're using an iPhone. I know if you're using an Android, you have to enable it. Um, and those will take you to the links where you can see those YouTube uh, well, well and Manitowoc Ice uh, videos that will come right up for you. Next month is going to be February, right? February 18th. I'm just looking at my calendar here. Uh, and next month, we are going to talk about ICE 101. So this month in January, we talked about cleaning and looking after your ICE machine a little bit. Next month, if you're new to ICE machines, we're going to do ICE 101. Why do we make different size cubes? Why do we use different condensers? Why do we have two kinds of different remote condensers? You know, things like that. Why do we do all that weird stuff that doesn't seem to make much sense if you're kind of new? to an ice machine so i want to look forward to you coming back in february the 18th here is your quiz for today so will is going to put a link up in the chat menu so if you're on your computer you can just click on the link and it'll take you straight to it if you want to do it on your phone it's kind of fun to do on your phone actually uh you can just use that qr code right there hold your phone up to the screen uh, on the camera, scan that QR code, just like me right now. And this will take you straight to a link. Um, this will take you straight to the page where you can fill those questions in. Don't forget to put the email you want your certificate sent to at, um, and then hit submit on it, on that unit. Uh, well, look, we'll also put um, some uh, links to detailed cleaning and sanitizing video on our website. That one's been getting a, a lot of hits lately. I noticed yesterday uh, on that unit. All right, I'm just checking the questions here today. All right, so that is going to bring me to an end. So I gave you, I gave you 10 minutes to uh, a little extra 10 minutes here. You can go ahead and fill that quiz out. I'm going to put it back up on the screen. Uh, I want to thank you for joining me today here at Manitowoc Ice in Manitowoc, Wisconsin. It's always a pleasure to have you. We're here to help technicians make their life a little bit easier, hopefully. That's our goal here in the Mount Walker Ice Service Training Department. So if you need something, let us know and go ahead and take that quiz now. Go ahead and head over there. And then when you're done, you can hit submit and you're done for the day with me at least. <laughs> Probably the easiest part of your day maybe. Um, but if you're up here in Wisconsin, stay warm. Um, stay warm everywhere actually. And hopefully I will see you next month. I look forward to it. Thank you.